This mini lecture assumes that you are already familiar with Mendelian genetics and basic genetic vocabulary. We're going to take a look at Punnett squares, monohybrid and dihybrid crosses, and learn how to make predictions. Very briefly, you should already know that genes are chemical factors that control traits, and they come in different forms called alleles. Living organisms carry two alleles, the genotype, for each gene, and are from each parent. What we see, how the genotype is expressed, is called the phenotype. And this can be a physical trait, like tall versus short pea plant height, eye color, hair texture, or this could be something like a physiological trait that you can't see with a visible eye, like blood type. Today we will learn how to use Punnett squares to predict one trait in an offspring in a monohybrid cross of parents and two traits in an offspring in a dihybrid cross of two parents. You'll be asked to predict the probability of genotypes and phenotypes based on the cross. Copy the Punnett square on your paper and follow along. Remember Mendel's law of separation says that only one allele is inherited from each parent. The top and the left of each box represents the parent's genetic information. Write an allele at the left and the top outside of the boxes. The boxes themselves represent the offspring and the predicted genotype of one offspring. Now we are going to figure out the four possible combinations of the genotypes from the alleles found in the egg and the sperm. Remember, this is a prediction, and we've simplified the process by looking at one trait only. Obviously, organisms with multiple chromosomes and genes would result in much greater variability. You might want to use a pencil, a highlighter, or even your finger to follow along. A couple of rules. We are going to write the capital letter first when writing genotypes. Each genotype is comprised of two letters, representing an allele from the mother and an allele from the father. To help you account for all of the possible combos, you can use a simple rule. We can use first plus first, big R, big R, first and last, big R, little r, last and first, but remember we're going to put the big R first, big R, big R, and then last and last, putting the big R first, big R, little r. Your completed Punnett square should look like this. So what does this mean? Now you can make predictions. The three possible genotypes and two possible phenotypes are listed for a single offspring. So you simply count the boxes to figure out the probabilities. In this case, two of the four boxes are homozygous right, 50%. Two of the four boxes are heterozygous right, 50%. Remember, as long as one allele is dominant and present, the dominant phenotype will be expressed. Zero of four boxes are homozygous left. So remember, the only time you will see a recessive trait is if both alleles are recessive, lower, lower. In this case, when we look at the prediction for the phenotype, four of four boxes are going to be right-handed, so 100%. Now, you fill out the Punnett square and make predictions for a monohybrid cross of a heterozygous father and a heterozygous mother. The trait is hair texture, and dominant is curly versus recessive is straight. Straight. Pause the video and complete the Punnett square. We've split the alleles, uppercase H, lowercase H. After we completed the cross, we have one of four homozygous curly, so 25% or uppercase, uppercase. Two of four boxes are heterozygous curly, so 50% are upper lowercase. One of four boxes is homozygous straight, 25% of the boxes have lower, lowercase. So in this particular instance, the phenotype, three or four of the boxes, 75% are going to be curly, but represent two different genotypes. And one of four of the boxes, 25% are going to have straight hair representing that one box. Copy down and cross the homozygous dominant father and homozygous recessive mother. The trait is dimples, dominant is dimples, recessive is no dimples. Pause the video and complete. 
the cross results in four of four boxes heterozygous for dimples. So in this case, 100% have the same genotype, 100% have the same phenotype. So the prediction is that the offspring will have dimples. Let's take a look at two traits. Let's examine the setup of a dihybrid cross of two parents who are heterozygous for two traits. The setup is the same. Write all the combos for the parental alleles across the side. Because we are crossing two traits, there are more possible allele combinations within the egg or the sperm, so there are more boxes. You may have noticed that across the top and side, you see a lowercase letter and then an uppercase letter. This is okay. Remember, these alleles are for different genes, so these are not genotypes. This is the information found within an egg or a sperm. We keep the genes separate. To complete the cross and make predictions for what one offspring may have as a genotype and phenotype, use the same method of dropping alleles into the boxes. Here's a tip. Complete the genotypes one at a time. In other words, in this case, we have A's and B's, so I would suggest completing all of the A's first and then do the B's. So you should see two A's followed by two B's in each box. The capital and lowercase rules apply within each set of genotype. Let's look at what a completed dihybrid cross would look like. Copy and make notes. So here's a completed cross. The two traits are P color, dominant is yellow, recessive is green, and P shape, dominant is round, and recessive is wrinkled. The parent generation crossed a homozygous dominant yellow round P with a homozygous round and wrinkled P to get a double heterozygous yellow round P. Two double heterozygous yellow round P's are crossed to make this dihybrid cross. The dihybrid cross displays the results. So you can see the split alleles across the top and sides for each parent. In the cross, you can see that the P color, upper and lowercase y, and the P shape, the upper and lowercase r's, are separate. So you have two genotypes next to one another. Notice that you don't see yr, yr. In this case, you see double y's, followed by double R's. You could have written the double R's and then the double Y's, that's fine. Capital letters come first within each set of genotype. Let's look at a couple of examples. If you look at the top left box, we have upper upper Y and upper upper R. So it's homozygous dominant for yellow and it's homozygous dominant for round. Let's look at the last lower box. You have a lower lower Y and a lower, lower red, sorry, round, an R. So this is homozygous recessive for green and homozygous recessive for wrinkled. Find a homozygous dominant for yellow and a heterozygous for round. Pause the video and look. If you look at the third box on the top, you will find homozygous dominus for yellow and heterozygous for round. Find a double heterozygous for both traits. If you look at the second row and the third box, you will see upper lowercase for both traits. Find a homozygous recessive for green and a heterozygous for round. If you look at the last box in the second row, you will see this combination. The point is you will be asked for to determine probabilities for genotypes and phenotypes. A tip, you might want to make a list of the possible phenotypes. In this case, there are four possible phenotypes. You have yellow round, yellow wrinkled, green round, and green wrinkled. And then you can just count the boxes to come up with the probabilities out of 16 boxes total. These phenotypes represent more genotypes than you have when you have a monohybrid cross. In this case, you have four different genotypes that will give you a yellow round P. You have two genotypes that will give you a yellow wrinkled P, two genotypes that will give you a green round P, and you have one genotype that will give you a green wrinkled P. 
So practice makes perfect, and that's what I suggest that you do. Also, on YouTube, Learn Biology and Bozeman Science both have excellent tutorials in monohybrid and dihybrid crosses.